Hi, I'm Brent Johnson, and today we are in Carondelet neighborhood in St. Louis again, where we were just about three weeks ago. Uh, with me today is Dr. Horst Buchholz. Horst is the organist and director of music at the Cathedral Basilica of St. Louis, where you play the largest organ in town, is that correct? I think so. I have not counted the pipes, but people tell me there's, what, 7,680... Uh, we'll visit that organ sometime when yeah, we have yeah. a bit more time and than we do today. This maybe we have the time to count the pipes. Then. We'll do that then. But today we're in the chapel of the Sisters of St. Joseph of Carondelet. But it houses a Kilgan organ that was from 1924. So we're just a few blocks up the street from where we were a few weeks ago, but we're 22 years in the future and we get a completely different kind of instrument uh, than we have on that little tracker organ. This one is completely electro-pneumatic and uh, two manuals, and um, let's figure out how many ranks we've got because I don't know. So let's start with the swell. What have we got? Well, on the swell, um, we do have a violin by Payson. Let's start with that. The soft principle is not very stringy at all, so we're right. diapason and violin. And then there's a stop diapason. And on the softer side, uh, oops, uh, there is an aeolian. Of course, with the Celeste. Yes, and uh, we actually hear some background noise from outside uh, that is louder than, uh, louder than the organ. The organ sound, yeah, so then we have a four-foot flute harmonique. Yes. Sounds like an open flute. So then after that we have a four-foot violina, which is something you don't see in a lot of uh, later organs, four-foot string. Which is a very narrow scale flute. It sounds metal, probably open. Yeah. yeah. But with the uh, um, violina and the aeolian, I think we have a nice uh, string chorus here. With the obligatory octave couplers 16 and 4. Use the violin diapason instead of the aeolian for a bigger string input. Absolutely, yeah. So we have these two four foot stops here the flute harmonic and the uh, violina, and they blend well together, although they are very contrasting. Here is the flute, violina, and together. And because of the electric action, you can use the 16-foot subcoupler. You have a swell to swell 16 and almost make those into an 8 and 4 individually, or use them as an 8 and 4. Which a lot of Bach words don't, and you can use those four foots and eight foots. And you yeah. forget about that, so that's handy. Well, in some organs, we find a four foot uh, um, octave coupler built uh, um, for up to 72 uh, pipes, but it really is. I don't. Mm, that would be an interesting test. It, uh, it okay. might be 73. Yes? Yeah. So we have 73 note. Manual, so your four foots even go up to be two foots, and your eight foots could be four foot. So, right. with just these, now how many ranks have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven flue pipes. And then we have uh, two more reeds. Yes, there is an oboe eight foot. Nine, so you actually can get twice as many. So. Very nice oboe, and then we also have a latimana. Yes. Our tremolo is not working. 
here doing something. But it's not tripping. Yeah. No, it's not doing. But that's a lovely Vati line. Yes, it is. And yeah. you can blend that. How does that sound with our string ensemble if we add the box to that? Maybe uh, with a sixteen foot or let's just try that. Again, yeah, even thing. with one, two, three, four stops out there. Yeah, but that's all Six. That's, yeah. So all of that's completely enclosed and in a box that shuts down very nicely, so it must have uh, fairly heavy doors on it. Um, let's, let's jump down to the grate and see what do we have here. We have an open diapason eight. bigger in scale. This is a bigger room, of course, so it, it makes sense, but you know, we've got some, some rattly ones in the facade, the uh, eight-foot yeah. hazing is out here, but um, then we have an eight-foot viola da gamba next to that. That's much softer than the open diapason is. Yes, but I bet they blend pretty well. Overtone to the uh, brightness to it. And then an eight foot melodia, another open flute. Every, well, the eight-foot open is outside. Probably the eight-foot open is not. And then there's a four-foot octave. My guess is, is that actually separate or is that just an extension of the open? Let's check that. No, it sounds different. It's a separate four-foot octave. So yep. they haven't quite, in 1924, gotten into all this severe borrowing that Kilgan did on a lot of organs of size. There's no two-foot on the grate, um, so we have to use our great uh, octave coupler in order to get a little more brightness there. And Says that he knew, but of course we should add in 1902 George Kilgan actually died. So this organ was built by the company that was run by his son, even though the label says George Kilgan and son, uh, it was his son Charles Kilgan. So the, the, another example, in 20 years the design of these instruments has changed completely and they're going for a completely different idea, more symphonic, less classical in design. Well, and then probably also uh, serving the Roman Catholic liturgy uh, in the 1920s where we still had the old Latin mass. So the organ has a lot of um, accompaniment functions uh, during the service, uh, which would be probably different from the Lutheran. So you were playing a lot of counterpoint in the Bach chorales. Yeah. Well, well, I doubt whether they were playing much Bach <laughs> in, in the small parish. So we have a full set of couplers, swell uh, to grade 8, 4, and 16, and then grade to grade 4 and 16. So yeah, you, you don't have a ton of brightness, you don't have a ton of upper work, but you can make things happen by coupling down. I mean, you do have the two-foot flautina, you can couple and that gives you a one foot on the grade if you need something sparkly. Right. Yeah. So we have one more flute in there. We have a four foot flute d'amour, which I assume is an open flute. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's very gentle. Yeah, the box is closed, but still, that's yeah. very light. Compare that to the eight foot melodia. How, does it, how do those two compare? Smooth, gentle 
sounds in this order. The biggest stop we have on there seems to be the open diapason, which is, far, really yeah. sings into the room. But we also have a trumpet. What does the trumpet sound like? exact sound, you know, we were talking about this with the trumpet down the street in the 1902 Kilgan, maybe things have been altered a little bit. Um, it could probably even use a little revoicing now to smooth it out, but it's a nice big trumpet. How does that sound then if you add that to, say, the open and the octave? That's the same as the stop diapason, eight foot. Probably is. Let's just check that. Uh. No, no, it's not. It's a completely it's independent. independent. This is independent rank. Yes, I, I, I'm not familiar with Kilgan organs. I have this much yes. string. So there's yeah. nothing borrowed in this instrument except maybe the pedal. But so we have a complete sixteen there that we can use. Play that a little bit. Um, Does it sound like at the bottom? The sixteen foot Borden. It's very soft. It's a manual uh, yeah. 16, which really it's, carries. It's got a lot of fundamental. It's not loud, so, but it's definitely, you can feel it. So what does our 16, 8, and 4 sound like then in the swell? Our flutes are stop diapason, and then our flutes are really, and our two for flautino. There's our whole flute chorus. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, the, the tremolo of those ages were usually very, very fast. Yeah. <laughs> so now we have uh, the um, violin that plays on the violina. So you see that we have sort of a chorus here with the 16 and 2. These are all straight. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 17 ranks on the manuals. Yes, and then so uh, I think that this Borden here is um, the same um, that we have on the swell. You're right. Yes, and then there is a Lieblich gedeckt in the pedal, which is even softer. So that's an independent that's pedal 16 that would do this art. And then there is a violoncello. Very nice cello. And then there is an open diapason. Ranks. This instrument is the same size as the two-manual tracker. I had no idea, but it's completely different sort of sound, and, and but equally as flexible and as well thought out as well designed. I think mm -hmm. uh, so. They were still still doing very good instruments back then. 
So what do we have? What other features do we have on the order? We have, some, we have three shoes down here. Right. Uh, um, so we have the um, swell box for the uh, second manual, swell division, and then we have the uh, swell box for the uh, first manual, the great, uh, except open by base and everything is enclosed there. And then this, I assume, would be a crescendo, right? This one is a sforzando. That brings on everything and the reeds. And the reeds. And then this one. Let's see what this is. Oh, again? this is just the, the great coupler. Good. The great to pedal coupler. And there's one indicator light for both the crescendo and the sforzando. Yes, I think uh, when the light is on, it's getting louder. <laughs> <laughs> so you just know something is on, it's going to make noise. Right. And then we have a couple of pistons here. Yeah, we do. These are mechanical. Um, these are probably, then to set them, you actually just hold the stops down with one hand and press which piston you want to say. So let's turn the other off. And see whether that changes that. It does. It does. Uh -huh. That's how that works. That's all you have to do. So we have four pistons per manual, um, and they also affect the pedal stops on each of those four. I saw those going down. Yeah, so the swell seems to affect the uh, um, the pedal as well. Does the grate do that as well? Okay, let's see let that. We'll have it canceled. No, <laughs> with the orchid that side, we <laughs> just we swipe yep. once across the. Yep, yep. Yeah, it does that too. Uh, so. so the they're divisionals, but they affect the pedal. They affect the pedal as well. So let's hear a little bit of this organ. Uh, what have you got here to play for us? Well, I thought, uh, what is fitting uh, for an organ of this period? And uh, there was a composer who was actually uh, frequently published in a periodical called The Organist. Uh, shorter pieces are uh, useful for service as well as for concerts. And this composer's name is E.L. Ashford. And uh, you wonder, uh, who was this guy? And uh, what was uh, his real name? Well, her real name was um, Emma Louise Ashford. Uh, she was born in uh, 1850 in Delaware and then uh, moved around quite a bit with her family, um, was in Chicago for a long time and wrote over 600 pieces of music. But because women composers were probably not quite as much appreciated in those days as they are today, uh, she very frequently just gave her initials and people have to guess who is E.L. Uh, or what does that stand for. And I have uh, two little pieces here. Uh, one is called In the Twilight, a very charming uh, piece which um, shows off the flutes here on the swell and then the oboe.
one of the things I notice about the facade here is that it's got this panel in the middle. It's beautifully carved, just like the stuff around it, but it's about the size and width of a console, which would make sense if the console had been you know, up against the facade in the first place. And when I look at the floor, I can see that this indeed, there's a, there's a change in the floor where the wood has been replaced or changed. And so this stage probably came out more. This wood down here is different than the wood of the case. So this was cut back at some point. And I bet the console was up here and they replaced it so that the console, the organist could look over the edge of the balcony and see what's going on. But this looks like the other wood in these four planks here. Just, they're different. Maybe they came from, maybe they were part of this wood up here. But I'm wondering which is the newer uh, one. Whether this is the older one and whether there was something that was laid under here. Well, you know what? This wood looks like this wood. So maybe this is the right. old floor. Yeah. That, that and there was probably a hole or something for the console winding or something, and they had to get replacement wood. We can never tell for sure. And of course, the doors have been replaced by something that's a bit newer. As a matter of fact, uh, these doors look a little bit uh, like uh, your uh, closets. Uh, yeah, they're just closet sliding doors so we can get into the organ. At least it's easy to get in. Well, let's see inside what we've got. It's very crowded. There's our regulator full of bricks. Somebody's added some weight. Wow, you can see the old junction board back there with some new work has been done. I see a new set of wires on it. Then right up in front here is the, that must be the great open. That's the only stop that's not in the swell box. So the great box is here on this side and then the swell box is over there. Of course, I see new shiny Peterson swell motors there, so some work has been done. There's some new PVC here replacing the winding right next to the old tin wind lines. Uh, the winding going out to the facade pipes is new PVC. Yeah. And the reservoir has been re-leathered also. Yeah, but everything looks very neat. I mean, it's very yeah. well, looks well done. So you have to climb over the eight foot diapason in order yep. to get into the great chamber. So I'm up on the walkboard now over the grate open and we can see inside the grate. And I'm going to go over here to the side and this looks like the pedal the pedal uh, uh, cello thing. And I can see the 16 foot open back there and it is really big. It's hard to see because it's dark. The wood is stained very dark. So to get into the grate box, the swell trace actually comes apart. There's just pins that hold it in. And from there, you can then open the door and you can peek into the grate. And we see right in front the trumpet. Uh, next to that looks like the four foot octave, then the string, the dociana, um, and then, no, that's probably the diapason. Then we see our four foot flute, which is stopped. That's interesting. And then we have our dociana back there, and then our eight foot open flute, the bottom of which is stopped. There's a tiny little walkboard that you can get in if you need to tune those, but really, if you ever have to do anything in here, you probably just have to tune the reed. And for that, we have these panels on the outside. There's some little turnbuckles that you can open. You can pull that panel off, and you'll see the reed stops right there. So you can tune reach the tuning wires. I assume the swell probably does the same thing. I'm right in front of the swell now, and I'm behind where the old console would have been. And sure enough, there's something on the floor here that would have been where something was. I don't know what that means, so... But it's just evidence that things are different than how they used to be. Of course, there's another brand new swell motor, so that indicates that. And then this is the swell regulator. This one has one for each division. Here we see some evidence of new junction boards. So some rewiring has been done. There's some old cotton-covered wire meeting up with new wire that's been replaced, so in order to replace something they had to take out the old wire, put in the new, and so I'm guessing there might be a new relay behind this box. So the swell chamber doesn't have a walkboard in front of it, we have a little step up you have to do, and there's the door. It's way up there, and then there's this piece you can knock out. I don't have the ladder here, but I'm going to open up one of these panels. So here's the uh, here's a swell with a tuning panel removed, and we see right in front the vox humana, 
and then behind it is the oboe. There's some flutes in the back that are all stacked up there on really tall toes so you can get to them. So things are kind of crammed in this box. All the Voxumana pipes. So we're on the right side as you look at the organ. This is the C sharp side. The pipes starting from low C are over there on that side. And there's a panel for them right there that you can open up if you need to. And there's the piece of the trace you take out to get in through that door. But we're not going to go in today because I don't have a ladder. Here's the chamber lights. Don't see switches like that very often. The chest for the facade pipes. It's just this little wind chest here hanging off the case and if I press one of the primaries we get a sound. Not very big. The second piece by uh, E.L. Uh, Ashford is a postlude in F. Uh, it shows the Hypazen choruses and then uh, in the end for a brief uh, period the full order. All right, let's hear it. Of course, thank you for showing us this organ today. 1924 Kilgan of 19 ranked here at the Sisters of St. Joseph of Carondelet. It's a really well-designed little instrument. It is, and it is definitely suitable for the liturgical uh, use that uh, was the, in practice uh, uh, back then. And uh, um, I think it can play uh, quite a few of uh, pieces of organ literature as well. When you, of course, have you to think, when, even when they played Bach in those days, when they did not expect uh, that everything had a mixture. And if you look at the older uh, Bach editions of that time, and they were really uh, done with the, uh, these kind of organs. It's so, still here doing a great job playing today. And I hope that we can preserve it uh, so that future generations will enjoy this instrument. Indeed. Thank you for watching. Remember, you can always subscribe to our channel to get more videos of new organs coming up. We're going to see a couple of big, newer organs in the next couple of weeks. My name is Brent Johnson. Remember, you can find streaming classical organ music on our three stations anytime. OrganLive.com, Positively Baroque, and The Organ Experience. Thanks for watching.